The Reality of Abortion in Oregon, coming up next on The Woman to Woman Show. Hi, I'm Luann. Welcome to the Woman to Woman Show. My guest today is Cornelia Senior. Mm. Welcome, Thank author you. Thank of you. Writer Mom Tales. That's right. We are fellow moms, or how do you say that? <laughs> fellow moms. Fellow, fellow writer fellow moms. Fellow writer yes. moms. Yes. And you have five beautiful children, and I have six ugly ones. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are having so much fun talking about your new book. This is your second book. Yes, it is. Writer Mom Tales. Yes. And read the little subtext there. there. The subtext. Get, yeah. get ready for this. This is so fun. Corralling the commotion while savoring the chaos, spilled Cheerios, and prayers of real life motherhood. You know, I love how you said real life because yes. I guess we both know. Yes. You pick up a magazine, or you look at the sitcoms, mm -hmm. or you read what the Hollywood people mm -hmm. are doing. This isn't real life. Nope. And moms read this and think they are falling short of the mark. Yep. Uh, yep. Talk about that, of how you mention what's going on. Well, one of the reasons I wrote this book is for real life moms. So many books out there are by psychologists. Oh, yeah. Are by Hollywood moms with their nannies, and their, their housekeepers, and their gardeners, and their personal chefs and their personal trainers. Well, Luann, I don't know about you, that is not my reality. Um, no. I wanted to write this book and say, moms, it's okay to have spilled Cheerios on the floor when your friend stops by. It's okay mm. to not have perfect meals. It's the idea of making the effort with all your children and being there for them every day. Well, you know, I'm glad you did mention it because it, it does kind of bother me when I see people doing as an expert writing these articles mm -hmm. and they've got one or two children. I Give know. me a break. I, I mean, we, we left one or two children status a long time ago. Yes, and, yes. and you know, I also wanted to bring up your book because I think it's so important that a mom of five mm -hmm. wrote this, not only because you carved out the time, you can mm -hmm. prove mm -hmm. you can have a life and have <laughs> five children. I have six mm -hmm. and we, we have talked about experiencing sometimes not the most welcoming attitude for big families out there, not to mention that it's like, you know, family of four gets to win the trip or, you know, we're always out and out. But, you know, it's, it's encouraging people. That's, mm -hmm. I think, so needed these days. Absolutely. We talk a lot about the craziness sometimes. I use the word chaos in my book because... Sure enough, with a large family, there does come some, some noise. And I have four boys yeah, yeah. and twins in the mix, boys. And there is a lot of, of craziness definitely going on. And so the, I've, I've gotten those comments, but our dinner table is full of laughter and craziness and joy and wouldn't trade it for the world. But you know what? You just have to just smile and say, yep, love them all. And when we're just, we're, every child is a gift, every last one of them. And we're grateful for that. Well, you talked about the dinner table. Yes. You mentioned <laughs> talking about going back to teaching manners. Yes. What yes, do you, yes. what are you talking about in that one? Boy, that's a big one, isn't it, Luann, today? And there's and with the modern technology, there is a new set of, of manners that we need to oh, teach yeah. our children. Social yes, media. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my. So initially it's just things like the example of we were at a um, a park, uh, a, a lake, and this this little boy and a mom and we're with a dog, and the dog had done his number right next to us, and that happens at a park, yeah, but they right. don't pick up after the dog. Yeah. And so my friend I was with said, oh, you forgot something. And the little <laughs> boy and the mom look at us and say, mind your own business, and the boy cursed at us, this 10-year-old <gasps> child. Oh, no. I thought, oh, speaking of manners, it's just, it's interesting how these parents need to model the kind of manners, mm -hmm. and other types of things such as Texting at the table or oh texting in, in a in a movie theater. So these are the type of things we need to be teaching. We need to teach our kids because they're not just going to know gonna it. it. No, without. but they will be watching you. So you have to roll them on. I was in a theater oh, man. with my kids, and the mom next to me with her sons was texting, not 
once, not twice, the entire one and a half And it hour wasn't movie. like nope. the previews? The nope. it was the whole movie. And I'm like, oh, no. okay, talk about etiquette. You are, you're, you're, first of all, you're a role model. Second of mm -hmm. all, what are you teaching your children about how important they are to you if you're sitting there as a mom texting the whole time? So absolutely, we need to be teaching the manners how to work. Work ethic is a big one. Big work, one. I just yes. read something the other day. It was, mm -hmm. it was a book that taught a child that wanted a, a bike. Mm -hmm. Oh, guess what? They went and asked mom and dad, can I have the bike? Yep. And they said, no, no, you got to work for it. They right. worked and worked and worked till they could earn the bike, and then they felt so proud. Absolutely. Yes. Old-fashioned values. Absolutely. And those old-fashioned values are, are important today. And, and they've, been, they've always been important. They remain important. I live in an area of town that there's a lot of affluence in the suburbs mm -hmm. where I live. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you have the money. Don't be buying your kid a BMW at 16. I know. But trust me, it's happening. Yeah. What, what is there to look forward to if you have? And the, they and don't the, work for exactly. it. Exactly. And the idea of, uh, uh, I remember my, my husband's parents um, would have them work for half of it. So you work, you go out and do lawn jobs, whatever it is, and we'll work. We'll, I we'll, think that's we'll, a good we'll plan. Make it, that's, that's one option, doing chores around the house. My kids have even worked to pay for camp, my twins who are here with me today. And yeah. so that whole idea of, you know what? If it's given too easy, you don't appreciate it. So even you know? if you have the money that Absolutely. you could just buy the kids something, don't do it. Absolutely. Because it's giving the wrong message. Yeah. My eight-year-old, this is an example. I came home the other night from a meeting. He is power washing my basketball court. He, he's yeah. my little surprise, my fifth little surprise that came yeah. that God gave the best me. Kind. <laughs> yes. I love it. And he's out there power washing. My eight-year-old, he is earning money to save up for a some kind of a four-wheeler that he and my husband are going to work on and, and the rest of my boys. An eight-year-old. My, my, my um, twins are out mowing the lawn in our I yard. think it's so cool. We both have twins. I know. I know. Your twins are how old? At 13. 13. Identical. And, and mine are in the studio with me 24. Yes. That's amazing. I know. I know. Absolutely. So they're, both boys. one of them is out there uh, mowing the lawn. The other one power washing my deck. Yeah. They're uh, raising. They should work. Kids Absolutely. need to work is the message. Yep. They bought their own iPods with their own money. They worked hard for that. They've, like I said, they've even helped pay for their camps at church, church camp. It, there's something you, you have pride when you work for something. When it's given to you. It's just, they don't appreciate it And we need to pass much. this on to our children. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people know it, but they forget to teach yeah, it. You absolutely. have to teach that as a parent. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you talked about church camp. Yes. Faith is obviously mm -hmm. very important to both yes. of us in, in our Christian faith. And absolutely. I don't know, thank goodness we can still say it. <laughs> yeah. But it is important. Yeah. How, does that, how does that affect how you take the bumps and the, the you know, the, the down times mm -hmm. As a mom, oh, faith is 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 so important in terms of just I pray for my children oh, every morning so and every night. I've got on my knees every uh, every night when I tuck my kids in bed, even when they were sleeping. I'd pray for them. I pray for their future spouses. I pray. That's for, a good one. Yeah, that's a good I one. I just had the first one get married. <laughs> and my daughter's it getting works. married in March. <laughs> yep, yep. My daughter's getting married in yeah. March, and and my son is dating a lovely young lady. And so it's definitely, you know, I just feel that. The Holy Spirit, when you ask God to really be the main uh, source of strength and joy in your life, even through the rough parts, yeah. God takes you there. And you know what? The rough parts are part of life. I have a chapter in here called, Is It Safe? Sometimes mm. we want this perfect life that has no bumps. The bumps are what make it a story. That's what makes a good story. The perfect oh. life. Is that what we make movies and write books about? No. No. <laughs> it, you're it's, right. Yeah. And I talk about that too, where yes. where I try to encourage moms to, to write mm -hmm. down in a journal your feelings. If be they happy, funny, sad, frustrated, mm -hmm. write them down Absolutely. because they are your life right then. Absolutely. And it will be precious to you someday. Yes, I've been keeping a journal, speaking of journal, yeah? for each of my children oh. since they were babies. I'd write little monuments down. You think you're going to remember, but oh, you, no, won't. you won't. Oh, no, you won't. You won't. Yep. Yeah. And even some of the things they say, I even just when we went to Yellowstone two years ago with a van with six kids. My, my, we have five kids. You and my, drove. We drove to Yellowstone oh two days. Yeah. And my, my daughter's boyfriend from Germany was with us. Oh and now wow. they're engaged. But yeah. he's, he, he's from a small family and, and really loved hanging out with our family. But oh, was, yeah. My son, my youngest, said, Mom, where are all the yellow stones? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just those little things. And then the I other, love yeah, that. yeah. So I just love writing those things down. And, and in fact, many of the stories in my book, Writer Mom Tales, come from real life experiences. 
But it's a book for, it's, it's my real life experiences related on a larger scale. Every mom can relate to these type of stories. Well, that's and, what I was yeah, going to say. Exactly. What kind of feedback are you getting? Or do you have people oh, say, oh, yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. That's me. Well, many of the stories came from a column that I wrote for the Oregonian for three right. years called Real Life Mom. Oh, yes. 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 Wonderful. Yeah, and before that, I wrote a column called Writer Mom. Writer Mom. Yeah. And on the home front, I've had three columns. And I've gotten a lot of stories, feedback, oh. such as, oh, I totally relate to that kind of dinner hour. You should see my house on a crazy day. Or one time I wrote about a New Year's Eve as my older two were staying with friends that night. Oh, they yeah. weren't with us. And it was hard for me oh, to see tradition. that transition. Because one of the chapters in here is called Transitions. And seeing kids, like you mentioned your daughter getting married and my daughter, it's so hard mm -hmm. to see that happening. And that's one of the reasons I have another chapter in here called Extraordinary Ordinary, to savor every beautiful moment with your children because mm -hmm. you blink and it's gone. You, you just, know, you know? It, it, I, what I loved is when you talked about the really tough, tough period of time in a parenting season is that yes. when you're handing over the car keys. <gasps> yes, yes. This, when you talk about <laughs> safe yes. and you feel so helpless yes. with not just that you doubt their ability, but the bad guys out there yes. and you yeah. worry and you're not going to be there if a crash happens. You you know, you're their mom and you're not going to be there. Exactly. This is so real. Yes, it's very real. And it's also, again, going back to the faith, as you mentioned earlier, I have to just hand them over and say, Lord, they're your children. I'm going to do everything I can to keep them safe. And yet also, as they grow older, we, we let go a little bit more. That apron string starts to come a little bit looser. But we have to trust the Lord. They are gifts from God, I believe. And I know you yeah. believe that. And then we also have to say, here they are. They're, they're yours, Lord. And we're just the, borrowing yeah, them. I'm sorry. I but, know, but that's give so them hard. that tool so that yeah. they then can take that faith. And, and, and go with it and, and make a difference. One of the things I really believe is teaching your kids how to reach out to others and just and, and, and bring in those other people into their lives that are hurting. And you know what I mean? Just that's be a, another thing we have to yes, teach. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's one, besides the work ethic, I really believe the idea of... Well, you did mission work. Is we that did, right? yes, yes. In fact, I'm, I'm leaving on a, on a, on a church uh, retreat tomorrow, a, a junior high camp, speaking yeah. of crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I've gone and to Mexico. You, thank you for coming, yeah. by the way. You're in the middle of packing, and I grab you over here. Yeah, no, I'm thankful for having me. But yeah, I'm going to be going. I've been on a, a mission trip with my daughter to, to Mexico. And we went to Mississippi after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, my goodness. So I love I didn't those know trips. That. Yeah, but also just being mm. local. We have a Sudan family from North Portland that we've reached out to and, and mm. had one of the boys stay with us uh, that was shot by gang members. Oh, so really, and, and just teaching that, that we include people in our lives mm -hmm. and, and, and then again teaching our kids to. to reach out. Absolutely. You have to. Yes. You know, and I think that's so neat when you're bringing others in to to the chaos, but say this is a family of love, this is a family of chaos, but this is reality. And I love the fact you said your house is not going to be a museum. <laughs> you a can point. actually sit on the furniture <laughs> here or what. Absolutely. Doesn't that bother yes. you when some people have it roped up? Oh, oh can't go in the or, living or room. Or with plastic on it or plastic on the sofa. It's not real. In fact, my friend, uh, my, my daughter's, uh, one of her best friends, Breezy, she uh, had, loves to come over and she hangs out with us. And some, one time she came over, Luann, and it was a mess. I mean, yeah. we're talking dishes from the night before, the and counter can't mess, sit. the floor. Yeah, yeah and, she, and I said, Breezy, it's a mess. She goes, Cordelia, <laughs> remember, you've always said my house is not a museum, and we live here. And and I, I and I wrote that in the book. There's a chapter on that. My house is not a museum mm -hmm. because the friend felt comfortable. Absolutely, it's, and, it, and she's a gal I've discipled and, and worked with and through church and. So that really made, she comes over all the time. She must like something about the spilled oh, Cheerios. I know. Yeah. You know, I was an only child, and oh. when I was growing up, I just craved hanging out with the big families. I loved yes. to get invited to somebody's house that had yes. the chaos I was looking for. <laughs> it was too quiet at my house, you know. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you know, that's not that's not healthy yeah. to have it too quiet in the house. So I remember one of speaking of that, one of Rachel's yeah. friend, my daughter's friends, had said. She said, I like going over to Rachel's house because there's always so much going on. Oh. And, and when a, it's like the phone rings, the carpool's waiting, the cat's underneath the table. <laughs> and some, and I tell them, don't text at the table. And it's so much back and forth. And what'd you do at, yeah. at, at school? It's busy. And, yes. There's, it's life. It's real it's life. life. It's real life. And it's, it's real, real life. life. And exactly. I think that's pointing out those things is so important. But, you know, like you say, you have the days where everybody's going to see it as clutter and everything, spilled milk and all Absolutely. that stuff. And what happens when mom guilt oh, starts boy. to come in? Oh, is, that a, is that kind of common? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. My kids, I, I work yeah. from home. I'm a writer 
uh, and then I write for the, for the Oregon right. and, and the Christianity yeah. Today and others, Huffington Post. And I'm also an adjunct professor at Multnomah University, as you know. And so I have to be, I work from home often. I'm preparing lessons. I'm working on articles. And my kids look at me and say, Mom, your computer is your Xbox. Your computer is your DS. Oops. <laughs> your computer is your iPod. Because I'm always telling my kids, you know, get off the Xbox, get off, get off the iPod, yeah. go play outside. I've been accused of that, too. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> is it, you know what I'm talking about, yes. then? And I yes. thought... I said, I work from home, and so that guilt of yeah. five more minutes turns into 50 minutes. We'll, we'll go outside. And so I think that mom guilt will always be there no matter what. But because of that, Luann, I started a new tradition. Yeah. And it's weekly adventures in the summer. Oh. So it's, that whole idea of one of my chapters is called deliberate parenting. Yeah. It gives me a chance to know that even though I am working part-time from home, mm -hmm. once a week I stop what I'm doing and I find something new, someplace new to go. And I love that yeah, idea. It's on, so I put it on Facebook, and it's so, we're so it on, could be a a, a walk yes, or a yes. hike or a, or a lake or uh, anything. A so, store, yes, I mean, anything. Yes, recent, I love mo that. mostly it's outdoor. Mostly it's outdoor. Yeah. My most recent one was to the Audubon Society in Portland. I've never been there. Yes, so I we should go. Absolutely. Look <laughs> on my blog. I haven't written the blog. I need to do that okay. tonight too. Yeah. But yeah. another one was uh, uh, Ridgefield Wildlife Refuge. And these are local I places. Been there yes, I, you absolutely. know you have to play tourist absolutely. in your own city, don't yes. you? Go on my website. It's a great idea. I've got a, I've got a link called uh, "Summer Adventures with Kids" yeah. 2011. I've had one a year ago as well. So that helps me ease the mom guilt. I know. So I do. I love Taking doing those them. special adventures. So it really helps focus me and my kids. And sometimes, to be honest, they'll say, "Mom, we don't want to go." And I'm being honest. I, again, real life here. Because it's like, but, but it's your time. I know. But then once we go, it's great. And yeah. sometimes. Even when we go, they're squabbling. The kids are getting into a battle. When you have a larger family, that's inevitable. Right. But it's all part of the larger story. And we yeah. have a lot of forgiveness we have to do because I have had moments where I can, the, the, the intensity gets to me. And <laughs> no. so I have to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because yeah. the fight, you know, sometimes, you know, those interactions. It gets on your nerves. It does. And it'll hit me. And I'm saying, I'm so sorry. And then they have to say sorry. Make my kids say sorry. That's part of that whole idea of I think that's true. being real We're and human. saying, you know what, we are. And that's the mom guilt part. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, we, oh, I, darn it, I shouldn't have said that or I, know. Or, or I, I shouldn't spent have too snapped. much. I shouldn't have snapped. And, and, but I think one of the most important things is saying sorry and saying, you know, I am, I am sorry. But, and then when they do complain about my working, I do say, I'm doing this for you. So you can do <laughs> sports. Have those exactly. And, I yeah. know, I know. And when well, you talk about the computer, but yes. electronics as a whole, is that starting to eat into family yes. time that's, Yes. Something is, is wrong yes. sometimes. One of my chapters, the land is called Deliberate Parenting. Yeah. And in that chapter, I talk about one of my, one of my essays is called, it's called The Off Button. Mm. And my friends will say, oh, my kid's on the Xbox all the time. Oh, boy. I don't know what to do. I said, hmm, uh, <laughs> there's an uh, unplug button here. <laughs> you unplug it. I don't it. know what to, to do. do. I, and I, I honestly, I think... And you know, oh. and, and I'd be honest with you, it's easy to lose it as a babysitter. I I've been guilty of letting it go a little bit longer than I should. That's as true. Well. I do that with with reruns of, of Full House. Lucy or <laughs> Full House. We all have our we all. I know but, that thing. So, yes. Exactly. But then that's where we again. I have a friend of the one of the friends of the twins. I, I really enjoy this mom because she has a rule: an hour on mm. Xbox, whatever iPod, and an hour outside. And who ke watches the clock? Well. She does, they do. Yeah, but, but that's then it, where I'd but, fail. Yes. Well, an hour, yeah. But then don't... don't Set the timer. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> then, an, and then the an hour outside. And then hopefully the hour I like outside. That. Right. So those kind of... The, the give and take Something. with the kids. Absolutely. Summer's hard to fill sometimes, it is. isn't it? it is. When you have your work schedule, that things you want to do, and they're yes. kind of bored and walking around, milling around. Yeah. Something to eat, something to eat, something to eat. Right? I, 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 got a, I got a solution for you. Yeah, what? Projects. Uh, uh, projects. What so, kind of projects? Oh do you well, have? my my fridge needed cleaning. Oh, <laughs> that's that filled two hours. <laughs> my 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 deck needed needed power washing. Uh, let's see. So yes, give teaching them to work again. It's back to that feeling of accomplishment. Teaching them to work in the summer. So we, you could say, for example, we'll yeah. do two hours of work today. Yeah, I like and that. And then we'll Put go a out. Limit on yes, it. Yes, and then we'll go out in the afternoon and yeah. we'll go on an adventure, or we'll walk to the park, or we'll we'll do something as a family. So do you yeah. and your family in summertime? have a a set time you go to bed and get up in the morning as a family <laughs> or is it just kind of whatever but I, we're I, in the whatever zone I, and yeah <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very flexible person yeah. and that's part of my whole adventure mentality yeah, but yeah uh, 
I do. Uh, in the summer, we are very flexible when yeah. it comes to to that. I I we get pretty, pretty off much. Yeah, I think after nine, if they're not up, I'll start knocking. But yeah. generally, after they're, they sometimes they'll sleep in until ten. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they'll be playing their iPods, and I don't know it, and they're, yeah. they're up and. <laughs> So, yeah, it's and then we'll watch hard. movies or play yeah. games at night yeah. or go for a walk or yeah. we have a pool member, you know. Pamela. Well, you know, it was so funny because I started going to the the library and the used stores and pulling out those old musicals oh. and we watched Hello Dolly nice. and and the kids loved it. We watched uh, My Fair Lady. It's a great idea. We watched and I'm just like these I don't want them to grow up not knowing these great old time we got bob hope oh, there you go. tapes and so i'm <laughs> yeah. trying i'm yeah. trying yeah netflix to... is good for that as well i, I think. know yeah. i should but, i should look into yeah. that but the library but, works it's free <laughs> you know just just trying to make sure they grow up knowing some of these classics absolutely. that meant so much to me growing up yeah absolutely and stuff but but yeah. i want to talk again say where people can find your book where's yes. the best place yes so my book is either on my website which is my name cornelia okay. dot com, dot com. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or it's on Amazon. Oh, excellent. And, and and several people have ordered it from Germany. I have to say my daughter <gasps> lives in Germany. That's so, so cool. My daughter babysits for a gal with a couple yeah. kids. And she ordered my book in Germany. And I talk about going on adventures with kids. Yes. She planned a trip the following weekend after reading my book was an adventure with one of her children, taking the individual time with each child, and then she did a, a group one as well. So, yeah, you can oh. get it both those places, and absolutely. Well, I think this is so great because Europe really needs to remember yes. the value of yes. children. Absolutely. And Europe, I think this will encourage German absolutely. moms mm-hmm. so much with with this going there. And absolutely. I think I think God had a hand in that. Oh, thank you. I really do. Yeah, I believe you. that this this mm-hmm. encouragement for people to to rejoice with each new life and not knowing. Sometimes we look at our at everything on paper and mm-hmm. we think, I don't know. Did you ever do that? Oh, You're absolutely. expecting a new baby. Maybe it's three, four, five. And, and you look on paper and go, I honestly don't know how this is going to pencil out. <laughs> but uh, And they grow up oh, and everything. Have you ever, you're such you a know, blessing. God just... Yes. Just yes. brings you blessings you never thought. Open he, stores. He d- you, absolutely. You didn't know how it was going to happen. He didn't. There's there's a mom that I met when I visited my daughter for her 21st birthday in Germany. Yeah. And at Rachel's church, and she has five kids, and that's yeah. rare, as you mentioned. That in is Germany. rare in, in yeah. Germany. A yeah. mom in Germany has five kids, four boys and a girl, just like oh I do. Oh my gosh. And she ordered my book as well, oh. and and she said, please write another one, and yes. and because she she's like you know, she yeah. needs the support for being a mom to be acknowledged and to be recognized. This is the greatest gift. I dedicate the book at the beginning to other moms I, oh, I, who are so trying special. to live out. Uh, it's for other moms who are trying to live out the adventure and gift of motherhood as designed by the creator. So I've dedicated this mm. to other moms, in addition to dedicating it to my kids and, and, and God. But definitely, yeah. I just want to encourage other moms that this is the best thing you can do, the best the best adventure, and it's, it's, it is a gift. I love it. And, and I'm so glad you did, too, because I think... I think an encouragement to moms is not only what what Germany's going to benefit from but but Oregon moms yes absolutely because sometimes we're not in the most encouraging place for moms and you we talked about this getting yes. snide remarks when you're expecting a new baby mm-hmm. and and John Q public assumes that you're unhappy with the news mm. and this is this is just kind of comes at you from people sometimes good friends mm-hmm. will make hurtful comments and we have to remind people that when you meet that new mom that's shared with you mm-hmm. sometimes cautiously we're expecting a new child you know say congratulations absolutely. please please encourage that mom you just sometimes you just want to hear you're doing great absolutely congratulations absolutely. Isn't, yeah. isn't that wonderful everything's going to be all right you're doing a wonderful absolutely. job and we don't have enough people telling us we're doing a great job mm-hmm. yes. and i think this book does that yes. It It tells you, you are doing a great job, and that's why I I feel so blessed, and I I really thank you for doing it, because you you had a lot, a lot you could have written for, for, uh, you know, different markets, and Mm -hmm. you did this one, and sometimes... When you write a book like this, you never know the person it's blessing. Mm -hmm. You never get that phone call or that reward in, in knowing you know what someone's going to do but i i am very confident this this was divine inspiration mm, thank you and i thank i you. really believe that thank you. It's, it was a dream come true to finish the book luann i i spent uh, many sleepless and i mean literally nights yeah, yeah. 
a year ago, uh, staying up 48 hours in a row to finish. I had a deadline. Yeah. I, and and so I, I definitely, I told my kids I was going to write this book five years ago. Oh. In fact, my daughter gave me an it's empty. Right. You can miss deadlines. Yeah, I know. You're a mom. <laughs> but she gave me a, a book with a cover that said mom's first book. And it was just stapled pieces of paper and, and uh, on the front cover, and that was five years ago. And it's finally, it was actually now my second book because I wrote a different one for another publisher. That's right. Yes, so, but I did it, and I did it for my kids and for other moms because I, like you said, I want to encourage them that, you know what? You don't have to be perfect. Yeah. You don't have to be Martha Stewart. That's, oh, you don't, yeah. You don't have to be. Do our we, sheets match? You know, no. Yeah. When I hear about these moms, <laughs> God bless them, but, you know, that have post party. Yeah, that's right. Sheets match. Can I find sheets? Can I find know? sheets? I know. Don't you hate that when companies come oh, and you man. have to actually find sheets that don't have holes in them? I know I had to throw out a few lately because I've got company coming, my daughter and her fiance yeah. and my nephew's coming what from are you Germany. Do? I know. So I just yeah. want to say, you know, it's okay. It's the most important thing is you're spending time with your children. You yeah. know, just reading to them, going on adventures. Yeah. You're not gonna remember if your house was perfect. No. I, I remembered growing up and, and with, you know, another friend's mom and it you it just felt like you, you couldn't even go in her room because it was, you know, just, just not a place where you felt as as welcome, no. but I want my home to be a place that's welcome for my kids and their friends. Yeah, and trust me, there's day there are days when, whew, it could be better. And and and, and I yeah. okay, let's all clean up. I put them all to work. I think I, I've got to do that better, and I'm glad yes. you reminded yes. me too. We only have a minute left, yes. so I, I want to make yes. sure you mention the title of your first book. You live in mm -hmm. Westland, yes. and you wrote a, yes, I did a history uh, book. History book yes. about Westland. I did. It's the first. It's the only history book book about Westland yeah. in Westland. It's okay. called Images of America Westland. And, and it's can people get that on your website everywhere. too? Yes, Amazon, it's available at Costco, it's available at Barnes & Noble, Borders, which just closed. You made time. Yes. This is so cool. Yes. Powell's book, it's, it's everywhere. It's at local stores everywhere. All right, so yes. everybody needs to get both books, <laughs> Writer Mom, Cornelia, everybody needs to go to your website. Oh, thank you so thank, much for coming thank you and for making time me. to encourage other moms. Thank you, fellow Writer Mom. Thank All you, right. you Luann. Bye.